Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis. I'm just a professor trying to help you understand context in the war in Ukraine. Today, I want to kill two birds with one stone. I want to go over some uh, uh, Russian talking points and propaganda, and I want to introduce you to a YouTuber that is sorely undersubscribed who may very well be worth listening to. Um, his, the uh, YouTube channel is Savage Sage. Okay, the guy's name is Yaroslav, and so if you look at his information, uh, what you'll find is that his his whole goal is to expose lies about Ukraine. His name is Yaroslav. He's from Ukraine. Welcome to his channel, busting Moscow's myths in bulk or one at a time. Uh, I like the sentiment here. Um, now, a number of people have pointed me to a couple of his videos, and I wasn't familiar with them until very recently. So if you look down at his videos, what you'll see are things like fact check. This is the video that we're going to go over, and you'll see how Moscow stole the name Russia. This was very well done, and... Um, Again, m multiple viewers have pointed me to both. So we're going to look at the first one here, the one about uh, Kennedy. And if you don't know who um, Bobby, or yeah, RFK Jr. is, he's Bobby Kennedy's son. Now, Bobby Kennedy was the uh, brother of John F. Kennedy and the United States Attorney General during John F. Kennedy's administration. Um, and so that just makes what... RFK Jr. has to say all the more bizarre. Let's listen to what he has to say, and uh, I'm going to provide commentary a little bit throughout just to say, to either amplify a point or to direct it in a different direction or something along those lines, but I'm not going to talk as much as I normally do. I, I want you to hear what uh, Yaroslav has to say. Yesterday, Robert F. Kennedy, the presidential candidate for United States elections, have posted on his Twitter a video, Let's Fact check this video because it is full of lies, full of manipulation. It reeks with imperialistic tone, which kind of makes sense now because Muscovites are imperialists as well. So it's natural they would attract each other in this point of view. And from my own personal opinion, this is probably the most disgusting video I've ever seen from a democratic country or republic like United States. With this now, we're watching this only because it's full of propaganda and full of lies. It's not because I'm trying to make any political points about Kennedy. Kennedy is on the left. Uh, you could just as easily have do, do this to Trump or Tar Tucker Carlson. In fact, he has videos about Tucker Carlson. And so it, it's not for that. But just hear what's said and why, pay attention to why things are said as they are. Let's watch the video and play. I don't know how we actually openly go and defy this idea that we don't give Putin the fact that he is in control of a nuclear arsenal, that we want to sort of pick that fight and battle that's been going on for a long time there. And I just wondered... Okay, uh, so the argument about nuclear arsenal. So if, if a nation possesses nuclear weapons, does it mean they can get away with any kind of crime? Have you ever considered that nuclear blackmail must never work? From the looks of it, Kennedy Jr. does not understand this. Let's keep listening. Okay, before he goes on, I want to amplify that point because I hear this from a lot of people that are on this position of, uh, oh, we don't want to do that. I, I, they would say, I don't want a nuclear war. I'd say, I don't want a nuclear war either, but the fastest way to not get to a nuclear war is to not let this fester and get out of control. The fastest way to prevent a nuclear war is to tamp this down before it becomes one. Look, no question. Russia has nuclear weapons, but they can't use them for light or frivolous reasons. We had nuclear weapons. We couldn't use them in Afghanistan. So take that out of the equation. But you don't want to let this fester and spill over the borders of Ukraine into Moldova and elsewhere and, and become and then across a NATO border and become a potential nuclear war. Uh, as president, how do you manage that? You know, Putin every day says, I want to settle the war, let's negotiate, and Zelensky. That's a lot well. Putin doesn't say every day, not to mention his actions speak louder than words. He recently said that he's ready to fight a five-year war. We see that they're mm -hmm. escalating with each new day. On top of that, what are we going to negotiate with terrorists who came into our house, are killing us? What are we supposed to say to them? The only thing we can say to them, hey, can you get out of our home? Let's negotiate. And Zelensky has said we're not going to negotiate. But Zelensky didn't want to start that way. I don't want to, you know, belabor the history, but Russia was invaded three times through Ukraine. The last time Hitler killed one out of every seven Russians. 
Ukraine was invaded by Russia right now. Why is he talking back into history? You want to go back into the history? Every freaking country in Europe got invaded through other freaking country in Europe several times in history over. And in World War II, one out of every five Ukrainians killed. Kennedy Jr. is manipulating so hardcore here. Yeah, and before we go on from that point, I want you to think about this. Putin didn't have a problem with NATO until he did. Until about 2008, 2010, he made this hard turn against NATO. Before that, he was fine with NATO. And then he started talking about how he needs a buffer zone between him and NATO. And But when he took these four oblasts on the eastern side of Ukraine, he made that Russia. He didn't make that buffer zone. So now he needs another buffer zone on the other side of what he calls Russia, which is still part of Ukraine, what he calls Russia, in order to have a buffer zone. So he just, it's expensive. Expansionism, that's all that this is. This, these are pretexts to uh, maintain his position of growing his empire. They don't want to have Ukraine join NATO. They don't want Ukraine to join NATO. So since when a sovereign independent nation has to ask permission what they are allowed to do and what they are not allowed to do? That's a brilliant point. He deserves credit for that. That is wonderful. Well done, Yaroslav. Oh, when the wall came down in the Soviet Union and Europe, Gorbachev destroyed himself politically. By Gorbachev had nothing to do with it. It was the will of the people, of German people, to destroy the wall that was oppressing them. Do you, you see the imperialistic approach to this? Like, people don't matter. It's United States and Kremlin. That's it. And you will see this tendency in relation to every nation. Uh, let's keep watching something that was very, very courageous. He went to Bush and he said, I'm going to allow you to... Soviet Union was already on the brink of collapse. NATO mm -hmm. army. That is, that is correct. The Soviet Union was falling apart. That's what Perestroika and Glasnost were about, was trying to hold it together where he couldn't hold it together. And then so he allowed some freedoms because he just couldn't maintain it. 450,000 Soviet troops. But I want your commitment. After that, you will not move NATO one inch to the east. And we saw... So that's not how it went down exactly, but okay. only swore they wouldn't do it. This is a lie. We solemnly swore we'd not do it. It's a lie. Even Gorbachev confirmed mm -hmm. this is a lie. A mythos that he from the West bezüglich the NATO Osterweiterung betrogen wurden. Myth, justly. Yeah, that is tatsächlich a mythos. So we can officially call him now a liar, which I'm going to do from this point forward. Now, in. in in RFK's defense, and I don't want to defend him a whole lot, but in his defense, there was a conversation between um, our Secretary of State, not with Gorbachev, not with Bush and Gorbachev, and where it was like, look, we our intention is not to move further east. But then what happened was the Soviet Union collapsed. And after the Soviet Union collapsed and there was just Russia, all these former Soviet satellite states, all these Warsaw-powered nations ran away from Russia into the arms of NATO because they found protection there against what they knew Russia was like. Well, then in 97, Brzezinski was the first of the neocons said, we're going to move NATO a thousand... Right. We're not moving NATO. That's not what's going on. These nations all, well, except for Belarus and Ukraine, all these nations here ran into the arms of NATO to run away from Russia because for protection, especially those that were absorbed right into Russia, like Lithuania and Latvia and Estonia, they really wanted to. Sweden still trying to. So it's not exactly what he's saying. A thousand miles to the east. Again, he's saying from imperialistic point of view, we are going to move. He completely disregards that NATO is a voluntarily alliance. It's not that they moved it, it's that other countries requested to join it. A mm -hmm. huge difference. And take 15 countries into it and surround the Soviet Union. So then we not only move it into 14 new nations, but we unilaterally walk away from our two nuclear weapons treaty. Okay, before he gets into the next topic, th that. NATO moves east 
is a particularly potent Russian talking point. In the early days of the war, this was the one that I had to fight with the most by people who were pro-Russia. Uh, and they love that. And Ukraine's going to join NATO, so we have to strike now. They couldn't join NATO. There was a conflict within their borders. They were unable to join NATO under NATO's rules. So that's that was just a, a pretext. Is with the Russians. And we I do know Moscovia pulled out from several treaties by its own. And put Asia's missile systems in Romania and Poland 12 minutes from Moscow. You did not put them in Romania and Poland. You did that together with those countries, Romanians and Americans. Polish and Americans have done that. It was not your sole decision to do that. Okay, yeah. So let's go back to this last point with uh, Poland and Romania. They want defense. It's not like they were having their arms twisted. They know what Moscow is like, and that's why they were doing that. Now, it, it gets worse. It, it gets worse because of who RFK Jr. is. Your Watch. sole decision to do that. When Russians did that to Cuba in 62, we came this close to nuclear war until they removed them. This Cuban argument is very sneaky one because it mm -hmm. completely disregards the Cold War dynamic that was happening there and he completely disregards the fact that those missiles were for defensive purpose only. Was NATO ever a threat to Moscow? Answer honestly. And the answer is no. And again, you did not put them there. Poland wanted them there. Romania wanted them there. Let's keep watching. Okay, before he goes on, was NATO a threat to Moscow? Not before the invasion where NATO said, whoa, wait a minute, 2022, what's happening here? This is not okay. We're going to start arming Ukraine. Before that, they were not a threat to Moscow. Now, what's fascinating here is, again, who, who RFK Jr. is. He's Bobby Kennedy's son. And so Bobby Kennedy, if you remember, was in this meeting, like where they, the, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis was. Here's John F. Kennedy or no, let's see if I can move this over. Here's John F. Kennedy over here on the far side, on the far right, right here. And Bobby Kennedy is in this room. He's the attorney general. He's right here. That's his dad. That's why this is such a terrible argument coming from no, RFK Jr. The Russians don't want nukes 400 miles from Moscow. Since when does it matter what Moscow wants or not? Since when their desire is superior to what Poland wants, is superior to what Romania wants, is superior to what Ukraine wants. Since when, Mr. Liar, do you divide nations by classes? This is the first class where Moscovites are and second class are Ukrainians. What Polish wants, ah, who cares? Matters only what the stronger of this world want. Is this the world we really want to live in where power of the stronger dictates the reality? It's been like this before. Okay, so he's making an excellent point. And Putin, when he absorbed the four oblasts that only he and North Korea recognize as part of Russia, when he did that, he was saying, like, we stand for these people to make the decisions that they want to make. Well, because they happen, according to him, to want to make to be part of Russia, which they, you know, fraudulent elections and everything set aside. But what about Ukraine to be able to make the decision that they want to make to join the EU or join NATO or not be within Russia's orbit or sphere of influence? And so they schizophrenically ignore that. Want it to be like this now? Now, he also says, We then overthrow the Ukraine government. <sighs> we then overthrow Ukraine government. This is really hurtful for me to even comment. He completely disregards Ukrainian people as a subject to do anything on its own. He completely disregards Ukrainian people fight for what's right, fight for the future. He says that this was made by United States. Of yeah. Course. So the, the United States in this narrative manipulated all those people into overthrowing their government. That's and that is one of Moscow's most prevailing potent arguments or, you know, it's a coup. It was the coup on Maidan. Really? The U.S. gin that up? I, I don't think so. First, then the question is how and why uh, he's not going to answer to that. And mostly because this is one to one Moscow propaganda. Yep. So if you want to go with Moscow propaganda and claim that you've overthrown Ukrainian government, then you also have to admit that United States had a goal to destroy Moscovia. 
in 2014, they're elected government. Elected government. Western sympathetic government. Pay attention to the word elected government, right? Because our elections were transparent and fair, and we elected a new president. There was actually no overthrowment. In reality, this is a lie too. Our president has fled the country, so mm -hmm. Ukraine's legitimate parliament has just appointed new presidential elections. There is completely no overthrowment in here. Russia yeah, so if, if uh, the president didn't flee back to Russia, uh, that wouldn't have been an issue, but he fled. Where is he? Well, there's a vacuum of power. They needed to hold new elections. They did hold new elections and then they carried on. But Russia acts like, no, this is, this is part of the coup. Never mind the fact that they then crossed over into Ukraine's borders, ginned up a civil war over in the Donbass, uh, took control in Crimea, held fraudulent elections, and didn't seem to have any issue with that. It has to go into Crimea because they have a port. It's their only warm water port. And they know the new government that we just installed is going to invite the U.S. Navy. Before he said it was elected, <laughs> but now he says it was installed. See the contradiction? It's at their port. So Russia that went into Crimea without firing a shot. This is a lie too. There were several people murdered by making lots of shots. And this is part of Kremlin's uh, propaganda. It's just a pretty rapper, but in reality, it's a propagandistic lie. Because the people of Crimea are, are Russian. <sighs> Conveniently yeah. forgets to mention that there are Crimean Tatars, which Muscovites have nearly genocided. They have evicted them from their homes in 1844, and when they have annexed Crimea again, they have cancelled their self-governance, on top of it completely disregarding a big proportion of Ukrainians living there too, and completely disregarding that Crimea voted to stay in Ukraine in 1991 referendum, and completely disregarding that political parties that were rooting to join Moscow Empire in 2013 elections did not even cross the barrier to enter the parliament. On top of that, the census that we have said that majority of Crimeans want to stay part of Ukraine. Okay, let's keep watching. I, I can't add anything to that. He, he masterfully took that argument to task. So good on you, Yaroslav. Then the new Ukrainian government we installed started killing ethnic Russians in Donbass. So he now basically implying that United States started killing ethnic Russians. And ask yourself, why? Why would Ukraine or United States ever want to pursue that goal of killing ethnic Russians? And how do you differentiate between ethnic Ukrainian and ethnic Russian? There's almost no difference in appearance. This is such a baloney. On top of that, the leader of terrorists who instigated the war on Donbass, Strelkov, the one actually who is wanted for shooting down MH17, he confessed that without him, without Moscow's help, Donbass would live peacefully right now. It really saddens me to hear this from a candidate to for United States elections. Sorry. Let's so one on. of the things that I appreciate about Yaroslav here is that he also backs up what he has to say with facts, with articles, with, and he shows you what these are. So uh, good on him. Just a little Watch. bit more. They voted to leave and join Russia. They voted to leave and join Russia. So this Mr. Liar says that Moscow Empire has the most fairest and transparent elections. Uh, it's sarcasm, of course. Let's keep watching. He said, I don't want them. Let's give them protection and give them semi-autonomy and make an agreement to keep NATO out of Ukraine. That treaty was written by Germany, France, Russia, and England, the Minsk Accords. And the Ukrainian parliament, which is controlled by ultra-rightists. Ukraine parliament controlled by ultra-rightists is a lie. Yep. Ukrainian most far-right party did not even reach 2% yep, in the elections. It tiny. Ukraine had zero ultra-right parties in their parliament. But of course, this is the narrative that Russia wants to project, that these are all these Nazis and whatever else. And look, there's a symbol that kind of looks like something Nazi-ish or something. Okay, so we only got through 10 out of the 20 confirmed lies. I'll put the link to the video below if you want to watch more of what Yaroslav has to say. I think this guy is 
underrated. He's only got a thousand followers and change. And uh, now again, he doesn't have that many videos, so I understand. But one one point three or one thousand three hundred and change followers. This guy's quality work, as far as I can detect, and um, if you know something else about him, if good or bad, put it in the comments below. I'd like to hear it. But thank you, Yaroslav, for doing excellent work with this, um, and thank you all for watching this. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.